In 1932, gold prospectors searching within the San Pedro Mountains of Wyoming would make a groundbreaking discovery. A find which, for a brief period of time, exposed to the world the past existence of a group of people, a secret, unexplainable race, which has been successfully covered up for over a century. Cast into the realm of folklore, this group of people could be attributed to tales of gnomes or hobbits. The once native Crow people spoke of their ferocious nature for many hundreds of years. No taller than 36 inches in height, according to William R. Corliss in his 1978 book Ancient Man, a Handbook of Puzzling Artifacts, citing the Anthropological Institute, Journal 6, 100, 1876. An ancient little people graveyard of vast proportions was once found in Coffee County. It was estimated that there were as many as 100,000 separate individuals buried there. And in 1932, two gold prospectors would thankfully expose the existence of the little people of Priori Mountain to the world. Deep within a mine on the mountain, they discovered a secret lair, a tomb, somehow placed deep within the rock face. Within this tomb, they found the mummified remains of a tiny humanoid. Now known as Pedro, according to Dr. Henry Shapiro, an anthropologist from the American Museum of Natural History, along with the several x-rays he made, proving his authenticity, Pedro was 65 years old when he died, and he had unfortunately suffered a terrible fall, which had dislocated several of the vertebrae in his back. It seemed to Dr. Shapiro, a head wound that he had apparently suffered some short time after may have been the result of his relinquished life, in a curious act of mercy by his fellow tribe members. The Crow tribe attest to these tiny people once being gifted warriors, feared by all those in the surrounding areas. They told of the little people murdering all who ventured near them, even decimating a group of 200 strong warriors who mistakenly trespassed into their territories during the night. Pedro ended up in a pharmacy in Wyoming, and for seven years, he was a successful local attraction. One day, when an unusual businessman offered to buy him, after apparently paying a very large sum, the man disappeared with Pedro, and he has never been seen of again. The only existing mummy of the little people, it seems, was successfully confiscated during the late 1950s. To this day, it is not known where Pedro is, although for the person who locates his current residence, we have been made aware of a substantial cash prize for the person who can bring him back into the public arena, or at least enable further testing. If you know where Pedro is, please do get in touch. There is someone with a rather large present waiting for you. In our most recent video, we covered the astonishing, still existing, unexplainable fortification designs and other inexplicable architectural features which can still be found within nearly every district of modern-day Italy. We covered polygonal walls, multi-ton lintels still bridging ancient archways, resulting in the conclusion that much of modern-day Italy rests upon a pre-Diluvian foundation, stone relics from an era within history that has been hidden from the majority of the world for several centuries. However, Thanks to modern technology and the power of communication in which it has provided, photographic studies, past investigators' research available, and a resulting far-reaching exposure of this overwhelming evidence across the globe all at the click of a button. The evidence we continue to share not only contradicts modern academic theories regarding the origins of such structures. But thanks to the ability to collect and compile this information digitally through the medium of computers, certain individuals with an acute sensory ability have not only been able to share volumes of noticed anomalies that for many years were overlooked, but have linked these factors together through characteristics and as such have come to a conclusion that the evidence to suggest a past highly capable civilization once flourished here on our planet is now overwhelming. A civilization that at some point within antiquity possibly came to an untimely demise due to cataclysm, or transcended to a location or indeed realm we are yet to discover. 
master stonemasons, once creating incredible polygonal structures. Not only built with no mortar, but were capable of withstanding considerable onslaught, either from invading parties or natural disaster. A testament to this being that many still stand as proud today as when they were first built. A civilization that throughout our last few videos, initially aided by other compassionate, good-intentioned antiquarians, have been linking, thanks to their decision to construct such monuments with unique stylized block designs, possibly cast using as yet undiscovered advanced ancient technology, or indeed carved with as yet undiscovered precision stone cutting tools, which we have used to begin to identify this now lost civilization's work, ancient as yet unexplained ruins the world over, with this compelling complement of evidential factors supportive of our postulation of a past worldwide dominance. And although we personally hypothesize that the only logical culprit which matches our continued discoveries of their dominant existence and indeed advanced nature, being that of the Atlanteans. This premise, at this moment in time, is not the most pressing factor regarding our research. Indeed, at this moment in time, it is vital that we continue to compile a solid thesis which will eventually, inevitably, make any academics claim as to a denial of their past existence inexcusable. Ancient stone relics, found in nearly every country on nearly every continent on Earth, with our next area of focus being that of the gigantic Cyclopean ruin, which can be found within modern-day Bosnia. Known as De Orson, these ruins are not only a virtual match to ancient ruins we recently covered within Italy, but also as a number of alternative researchers have concluded, such as modern investigator Richard Cassero, Giuseppe Lugli, a past pioneering documenter of these sites, and indeed ourselves, are in fact some of the oldest foundations to be found on Earth, seemingly predating the more complex polygonal techniques witnessed elsewhere Although still possessing precision placement, it is of more uniformly shaped blocks. Predictably, however, academia has been forced, due to currently attested paradigm, to attribute these ruins to the Illyrian tribe, a group of people placed at the turn of the Bronze to Iron Age. Yet how this primitively equipped group accomplished such feats, quarrying, moving, and placing multi-ton blocks precisely atop one another is an explanation which is conveniently absent from academia's long and detailed description of the archaeological discoveries which have been permitted, collected, and subsequently displayed. De Orson was discovered in 1891, and not surprisingly, it has never been fully investigated archaeologically. Located on Gradina and Banye in Osanishi village, De Orson was once an immense and undoubtedly intimidating stone fortification, which we believe already stood at the site, leading to this group re-inhabiting it rather than building it, undoubtedly giving them a considerable advantage over rival tribes within the area, providing a practically impenetrable barrier, a sanctuary, allowing them to flourish, reuse like so many other ancient unexplained sites we have covered, and put forth the same posit for this being the main reason many of the ancient civilizations we now know well, the Romans, Incas, Egyptians, etc., lasted so long, providing academia with so much archaeological detail, which they have in turn used to claim such structures were the work of these clans. This claim always absent any satisfactory explanatory description as to how these cultures went about constructing such sites. It does, however, give a rather revealing insight into where many of their rapid technological developments arose from. Ingenious survival solutions, not invented but rather inspired, 
or more accurately, copied, from the remnants of the civilizations originally responsible for such builds, developments they would have full access to. The town of Deorsen, we hypothesize, was embraced by this tribe and, as such, now displays many archaeological features of a Hellenistic city. They predictably developed a high degree of culture and civilization. Yet, intriguingly, within the district, there also still exists fragments of what were once human statues, all around 2 meters in height. Yet all permitted archaeological artifacts are conveniently dated from the 2nd and 4th century BC, housed in the National Museum of Bosnia, clearly in an attempt to strengthen a fallacy regarding this astonishing Cyclopean ruin's origins. Who built De Orson? How did they move such enormous stones placed with such precision? Why are there remnants of statues, of individuals we would perceive in the modern day as giants? It is clearly an intriguing site, rarely shared academically, and not even fully archaeologically explored. A place we find, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Polygonal masonry is undoubtedly a top trump argument, along with tool mark patterning, and indeed pyramidal and other structural forms which can be found across the globe, which prove there was not only once an ocean-going ancient civilization, but a worldwide highly advanced superpower who once dominated the Earth. The proof is there for all to see, yet en masse, how they incorporate these proofs into their critical decision-making faculties is still up for debate. Yet regardless, this proof of their past capabilities are still on display the world over, a duly awarded testament to their building prowess. Although many have attempted to explain these stones, some claiming they are of artificial or geopolymer origins, others claim they are somehow a reformed rock from a plaster of Paris type constituent of the original stone itself. Some even claim a plant was responsible. Any definitive answer as to how these stones were shaped and placed, or indeed any recreation of these claimed methods, elude us to this day. A lost technology from a now lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization. Cusco, which translates as the city of the Puma, holds some of the most exquisite and best preserved polygonal masonry to be found anywhere. Home to the famous 12-sided stone, something which many are not aware of, however, is that it is also home to dozens of carvings and structures which were intended as artistic masonry renditions of animals, one of which, namely the puma. Academic hypothesis suggests that these creations were built by the Inca to once form the boundary walls of an ancient temple. Yet like the countless other areas we explore here on our channel, any explanation as to how the walls were constructed, or indeed why pumas and other animals were incorporated into this enigmatic stonework, is absent from all and any academically accepted historical description of their origin. We feel that these structures were built for a reason, even stretching as far as Egypt, present as casing stones on the pyramids of Egypt themselves. They wanted future man to witness this stonework, built to last and to remain immovable. It is as if they were trying to tell us something about their existence, and indeed the true history and perhaps future fate of mankind. We find Cusco's puma, and indeed the lost knowledge itself, highly compelling. Simir Osmanagic, a Bosnian-American businessman now based in Houston, Texas, has long claimed that a particular and uncannily angled hill, long presumed as a natural formation, is actually the largest human-made ancient pyramid on Earth. The claims have predictably been met with hostility by those in the academic world who protect modern paradigm. His work has also been heavily criticized, not only as a hoax, but damaging to the other areas of Bosnia which are authentic and mainstream accepted ruins. However, regardless of these hostilities, Samir has continued his research and promotion of the area as a tourist attraction. 
Furthermore, what he has since discovered from numerous excavations is curious, clearly artificial, and massive ancient activities now hidden beneath several meters of strata. Not only have these discoveries of ancient masonry corroborated his ancient claim, but there is also evidence to suggest that incredible efforts were made to divert and control the flow of local water systems, channeling them into and beneath the structure. Regardless of these discoveries, mainstream sources continue to dismiss his claims, and indeed further supporting discoveries, continuing to retain a position of complete denial, claiming that, quote, there is no evidence that they were shaped by human construction. The European Association of Archaeologists has condemned the so-called Bosnian pyramids as a cruel hoax, along with various other scholars." End quote. There are others, however, who have looked into the research and indeed Samir's efforts in depth, and from this have come to realize that there is much about this curious hill still to be unraveled. And regardless of the skeptics' unrelenting hostility to said claims, they have discovered something rather extraordinary. According to radiocarbon dating, done on an artificially constructed tunnel which penetrates the pyramidal feature, if accepted by mainstream academics, they would also have to be dated at over 32,000 years old. Could this be the reason for such hostilities in regard to fully exploring the site? The tunnels found in Ravni Park II have been carbon dated by the Archaeological Park Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation. We have ourselves in the past explored the casing stones upon the Great Pyramids of Giza. These stones, clearly of a much younger age than the stone in which they are now preserving, severe erosion upon these earlier stones, we feel, may also be indicative of a similar age to that found at the Bosnian site. Samir commented on the latest find by stating, quote, According to the results of the examination of stalagmites found in the new tunnels, we discovered an antiquity of 26,200 years old. It means that these entrances and tunnels, which until now have remained hidden from the public, go deep into the past of the region. He continued, when we add the time needed to prepare the base for the creation of stalagmites and corrections for calibrated age to the radiocarbon age, we arrive at about 32,000 years. This is exactly the age of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun and the underground tunnels of Ravni, and they are all part of the same culture," concluded Osmanagic, speaking to Denevni Avaz. These discoveries, along with Samir's earlier work, Regardless of the skepticism which predictably surrounds the site, we find highly compelling.